The first item on the agenda is a poster for MRI. Okay, so I'll hand them out. Okay. What do you want to watch on your TV? Jimmy Neutron. You watch Jimmy Neutron every morning. My name's Jenny Bucco and I am the chairperson of the Family Advisory Council. Now the MRI department's mentioning that there's not enough information on fasting and they're looking at putting it in a, is it an A3 poster? They're going to use it as an A3 poster in the waiting area of the okay. MRI department. I basically run the meetings, making sure we <laughs> stick to our agenda. <laughs> Say, isn't it too late once they're in yes. the waiting room to see a poster if they haven't already fasted? Yeah. The Family Advisory Council is the key consumer group for the hospital in terms of providing a family and parent and carer perspective on our policies, our procedures, projects that we might be doing, planning for the future needs of the hospital. Yes. It actually yes. states that please follow the fasting instructions yeah. given, given to you. you. The problem is so. sometimes if there's a little bit of a delay, people to Might get sit there their child and a drink. Hey, Where are you going today? I'm going to go see Catherine. FAC is really our major group for providing us advice and providing a family perspective on the kinds of things we're doing. Jenny is the chair. She has a really long and involved association with the hospital and so she understands various parts of the hospital intimately. I've got three sons. Morgan has a rare form of muscular dystrophy called Ulrichs and he has epilepsy as well. We have lots of adventures with him and my eldest son Jack's just been diagnosed with Asperger's and Charlie's just Charlie. We have Anne who represents Orch. She's able to really bring a broad perspective of what's happening for kids in healthcare. I'm Anne Cutler and I like to come to the Family Advisory Council to listen and hear what parents have to say about the issues that are relevant to them. Hi Jenny, it's Joyce calling from the Children's Hospital. Hi Joyce. And then we also have Robin and Cecily who we've actually made co-chairs and they also are very vibrant women. My name is Cecily Waterworth, I'm married with four children. My name's Robin Grindrup. My youngest child, who's now 14, was born with a heart condition. So when she was 12 hours old, she was brought to the Children's Hospital. I have four children. My eldest is 17 and she suffers from dyspraxia. I have another child who was diagnosed at eight. She's now 15 with juvenile polyarticular arthritis and I have twin girls who are aged 11. She's actually going really well now but we've, we've actually covered quite a lot of departments throughout the hospital in those years. You're on your way in for the meeting this morning? Yep, yep we're on our way now. I've had a chat with Mary from ED and she's happy to show us where the construction's up to. Excellent, well thank Mary for me. Alright Jenny, I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Do you know what this actually doesn't have is anything about the risks to the child if they do eat or drink. It does say down the bottom that your child's surgery or test will be cancelled. Yeah, Maybe that yeah, needs to be a bit bigger. Yeah. But that doesn't say and that it's because of the risk to your child. Yes, it maybe just, yeah. we need to put Absolutely. something like that. I really felt that I needed to become involved in the place that's basically keeping my child alive. If we encourage the partnership between healthcare professionals and families, we end up with a much better care. The child actually gets better a lot quicker. How are you doing? You good? They are a fabulous resource because they have so much experience. They know exactly what it is that families need. It's just a, a great opportunity to hear about what's going on in the hospital and to have some input into how changes can improve the way things happen. It's essential for anyone having surgery to have an empty stomach. If not, there's a risk that they may vomit. Food or fluids could go into their lungs. One of the problems is that most parents might not equate an MRI with surgery. I mean, that's specifically about surgery. True. There's a lovely balance between staff and parents. We're a team. And it's important to the hospital too that they get the input from us because they realise that they don't see things the way we do. If you're saying, if you're having an MRI, you need to fast, that's it's actually not, not technically anymore. true because oh. someone don't yeah. need to fast. It's more about... Maybe you could say you're having an MRI and some form of 
sedation. Parents are experts in their children and doctors and nurses are experts in healthcare delivery. So when you bring those two sets of expertise together, you're going to get health outcomes that are far better than having just the doctor and the nurse do their bit. If we don't get it right for parents and carers, it usually means we're not getting it right for kids either. And anything that we can do to encourage parent involvement in the running of the hospital means that ultimately we're going to do things better for kids. And cut, and take three, and roll them. Oh, it's still there. The door's still there. Has it moved? It's my favourite meeting to come to, I have to say, because so much gets achieved. So I'll send all that feedback Please to Chrissy, yeah. see what they come up with. That'd be great. We used to meet once every three months, then we started meeting once every two months, the and now we meet once a month for three hours. So there's more and more work to do. Will you be quiet? We're filming. Up, 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 They've really helped to improve and develop some services for the hospital like the Parent Care Resource Centre. They identified that they needed a place where they could get carer related information and it needed to be an environment that didn't look like the hospital. Hi Jenny, how are you today? The Parent Care Resource Centre is fabulous. Just to have somewhere to go that had tea and coffee that you didn't have to pay for because you feel like you've got your hand in the pocket all the time. And there was always someone nice there to talk to. So what are you doing today? We've got physio today and I've got to go to a FAC meeting today. So we're actually having a walk through the new ED. Excellent. It looks so different to what it was. We're actually going to go and have a walk through now the um, ED, the emergency department downstairs. They can quickly look at something like the plans for the ED, for example, and say that won't work, that won't work, or this needs to be like this or whatever, because they've experienced firsthand the way it is. So shall we go down? Yep. Lovely. Great. We'll go and see Mary. Emergency is always a horrible place to come to. Uh, when you're there, you're stressed enough as it is. So to cater somewhere that's not consumer friendly is very, very difficult. We've been doing some building work in the emergency department and it's been great having the input of the Family Advisory Committee. We'll look at the triage that's uh, they're building down in that new area where the hoarding is because we've got some families who have really thought about their response and they're able to give that directly to us and that's impacted on the actual works that we're doing down here and the design we've chosen. Yeah, this is where the triage nurse will be. You can just see that's the triage. We as parents are actually sitting out in the waiting room, not the hospital staff, so we know what it's like. Here is where the waiting area will be, but we're not going to call it the waiting area, it's going to be the playroom. The playroom. Woo the provision of a play area was one of my big considerations to keep children occupied while there are long waits in an emergency department. Our focus was keeping children safe and happy and make them feel welcome when they actually into the hospital. Only really parents who've been sitting in that waiting room for a couple of hours getting cold it getting dark, worried about their child, can really tell us what we can do to, to make that experience better. The bad and safety of not being able to run out on the road, yeah. the three things we told them were the absolute priority. And I think also too, having that wall around here, it does create the safety. Another project that we have worked on is the playground. <laughs> Look, there's more of We were able to have input with regards to making sure that it's open enough that children can be supervised, making sure it's accessible, making sure that it's safe. When I first met this group of people, I was just amazed at their dedication and their commitment. Some of them have children with quite high health needs, and yet they've still got the time and the motivation to come here once a month and help improve the hospital. Oh, there's a frog! <gasps> there's a frog! Can Morgan get it for me? Yeah. Good boy. We rely on them to make sure that we get it right. Very good. FAC is a fabulous group. It's really a, a great committee meeting to come to. FAC is going places. Dinosaur! What does a dinosaur do? <laughs> we have a very close-knit committee and we all work very well together. And we're all very passionate about what we do. I'm just going to my fact meeting, so I'll see you later. Bye.
Bye. What do you want to watch? Give me a turn. Again? Give me a turn on. No, we're not going to have that on. We're going to listen to Mum's music now. Okay? I want to go see the music. Okay, we could do some music. Alright, let's go home. What am I looking at? It's a little group of people. <laughs> so how important are these answers? Where's the camera? Right oh, here. Get time to We're filming here if you don't mind. Honestly, stop following us around with that thing. We're filming! <laughs>